here we go, and you're recording. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your name and stuff. Is that that uh, set there? Aye, ah, it's set. You just picked it up. Aye. Mm -hmm. It's on. It's um, it's recording now. Mm -hmm. Well, this is John Alexander. Mm -hmm. I was born at Cossieport on the 28th of March, 1924. And I started school in 1929 at the age of five years old. As, as the years went past, and I walked up and down the two and a half miles to school. I could count twelve pair of horses working in the fields, ploughing in the winter time, in all kinds of weather. I would stop and have a look at the men ploughing. You could see the furrows so straight, with the black earth shining in the daylight. As the weeks went past, with the ploughing all finished, the springtime was here, with all the men and horses busy breaking in the ploughed land, ready for sowing the corn in March and April, as corn was the main crop at that time. When the land was fine and dry, you could see all the farmers out with their sewing machines going up and down the fields as if they had not a minute to live. With the men and horses coming on behind with the harrows doing a double streak. The first farmer I saw on my way to school was Alec Anderson of Sunnyside. He had one pair of horse. He would be busy sowing the corn. The next farmer was my father, John Alexander, mains of Bantoy. He had two pair of horses and an Ora beast. The next farm I come to on my way to school was Charlie Niven of Craighead. He, him and his men would be busy sowing and harrowing in the fields with their two pair of horses. Then on down the road I came to Mr. Still of Esky Whale. He had smaller fields than some of the farmers. He was busy sowing with the, his one pair of horses. At the other side of the road was Bill Watson of Cookston. There would be two pair of horses sowing corn and harrowing. Then I turned down towards the school. The next farm I came to was Boch Warren. There would be three pair of horses working in the fields, busy sowing corn and harrowing. Then on my way Again, down past the smithy, there the blacksmith would be busy at his anvil. As I got near the school, I could see men and horses working in the fields at mains of Port Lethen. Then it was into school for my lessons. After I had been at school all day, we got out at three o'clock, and on my way home, I could see all the farmers still hard at work. Some were still in the same field. Some were into the next next field. Some fields were larger than others, so they took longer to finish. When the fields were harrowed four times, then rolled, some farmers had metal rollers some had steam rollers, but they all did the same job. The fields all looked fine and smooth and ready to grow. As I walked up and down the road to school, I could still see the men with the horses working in the fields. I could see the corn spruits coming through the ground and the fields growing green. 
then you could see all the farmers getting the ground ready for putting in the neeps and the ties. You could see them grow, going up and down the fields, putting up the drills, and they put them up very straight. Then a single horse pulling the neep barrow along the drills, sowing the neep seed. At that time, they sowed the neeps very thick. Some farmers put in a whole field of potatoes. Some just put in a few drills for their own use. In a week or two, you could see a few men in the fields, in each field, hoeing the thick rows of neeps, moving slowly along the drills. As I know what I was like when I left the school. But back to my school days and still walking up and down the two and a half miles, the next job on the farm was the hay making. The weather getting better, you could see a pair of horses pulling a mower in each hay field. Then in a day or two you could see all the farmers turning and gathering the hay into coals to dry before stocking. But this time it was, by this time it was August and the corn was growing five feet tall, beginning to turn golden. Then in a few days you could see the men riding roads round the corn fields. Then a man with a binder with three horses going round and round the field, cutting down the golden corn, with two men coming on behind, stuck in the sheaves. With this was going on all over the farms on the two and a half miles to school. It was a good time of the year. It took a week or two to get the cutting and stooking done. Then the stooks were left for a few days to dry out before the leading began to build the stocks in the corn yards. There was rows and rows of stocks all over the place. Now it was time to lift the ties. It was time for the ties holidays and kids, they are all ready to gather the ties. Guy sear box. Some farmers paid you four shillings a day and some farmers paid you six shillings a day, but you had to work harder. After the harvest was gathered in and the ties all up out of the drills, with all the kids back to school, with my me back as well on the road, road again. If you seen a car once a week, that was fine. If you saw a lorry in a while, that was great. It was no time for the farmers to start threshing the corn stalks. That was the time I saw the big steam engine pulling the thrashing mill up the road on his way to his first farm and the driver giving me a wave as I thought that was something special. Next morning as I was on my way to school the thrashing mill was working at Craighead with the steam engine pouring out black smoke with all the neighbours, about 12 or 14 farmers and farm servants working very hard threshing eight stacks of corn, corn sheaves. That would make four stacks of straw tied in bunches with one hundredweight of corn, a quarter being three hundredweights about 14 tons of corn. 
In a few days the mill would be at the next farm, and so on until all the thrashing was finished for uh, another year. With all the stocks disappeared, all the cattle that had been grazing all summer in the fields up and down the road had been taken inside for the winter, and we still wa and me still walking up and down that road. <laughs> no fits it. Yeah. My sister Margaret left the school two years before me. I will be leaving in a few weeks. That will leave Isabel, Elnott and George to carry on walking that road. I could see the men with their horses coming back into the fields to start ploughing again. Each year was the same and start the whole thing over again. My time has come to leave the, the school. I have enjoyed watching the men with their horses working in the fields all this time. I have walked that road in a short time. I will be doing the same work as the men I have been watching all this year. <laughs> <coughs> well, so, so be that either bit of well. another bit of Is that? I, no, I've got another bit of my seal, like, what about that one? Uh, if it's out of the bit I can't imagine. Have you got it here? I, I can actually... Don't worry, okay. don't worry. Okay, okay. okay. Go. Aye. That's ready. Aye. To go. Aye, that's fun, you will. Being a boy at Men's Upon Toy in the 30s was a great adventure. With all the cows and the men working in the fields with the horses, I would take a stroll round by the old mill dam where the baker turned his van to deliver the bread to my mother's kitchen door. Then I would carry on my way down the corn yard where the corn stacks stood majestically in their neat rows. Mm. As I reached the bottom of the yard, as I turned the corner of the engine shed, I met my sisters playing by the old cart shed. Mm. As I spent a while with them, I saw my brother at the top of the brae beside the bo old body where the men that worked on the farm stayed. I went over to join my brother, George, and asked him if he wanted to go down to the moss. Yes, he said, so off we wandered down the old road till we reached the fence round the moss. We would find a spare a space to get through the fence or go over to the gate, but it was more fun going through the fence. Then start our adventure. We would be joined by our collie dog. He loved to chase the rabbits. George and me would roam through the bushes and trees for hours, then all of a sudden we would think it was time we was away home for our supper. Now I'll, I'll read us in a bit with a what the decayed what decayed was the change over from horses to tractors. The forties. Mm -hmm. How many times a day does a dairy cow get milked? Twice a day, how much ground does a man with a pair of horse plough in a day? One acre. Mm. How old is a horse when it starts working on a farm? Two and a half to three years old until they are able for all the heavy work. Mm -hmm. What is a stirk? 
a young beef animal. Mm-hmm. What is a quarter of corn? Two bags of corn, three hundred weights. What is hill and neeps? Single and turnips. What is riding roads? Making a field ready for the binder. How many horses pulls a binder? Three horses. When did the combines take over from the binders? The 60s and the 70s. How many horses pulls a plough? A pair. How long did the harvest last in the old days? Six to eight weeks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there you go.